this is Marie Lane from the Buying Space Channel. Today I am continuing my series on Revelation. I am in Revelation chapter 8, and this is the seventh seal, out of which the trumpets come out. So I'd like to your opinion in the comments as to what the trumpets are. Uh, this chapter does not cover all of the trumpets, but we will start in Revelation in the New Testament in the King James Version of the Bible, chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. To him were given seven trumpets, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with all the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's head. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. The seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. The second trumpeteer, and the second angel sounded, as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures were in the sea and had life died the third part of the ships were destroyed the third trumpet and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from the heaven burning as if it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Woodworm, and the third part of the waters became Woodworm, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. The fourth trumpet and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise and behold and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which were yet to sound. Many people believe there's going to be a planet and uh, planet X. Now I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying that this is one of the many, many theories out there. And around our sun, we have eight, maybe debatably nine planets <laughs> circling our sun in a set orbit. And it's been that way as long as human history has recorded. Uh, I, I will stand corrected if 
someone else has another planet in there or a planet's disappeared or come on the scene. Uh, maybe been discovered, but it was there all along. Now, the Planet X theory is that a planet or an object that's planet-sized, that has a different orbit, that's been completely away from our solar system, that's orbiting something maybe greater, like a, a bigger sun that's further away, or a black hole, is going to come through our solar system and it could impact our moon, it could impact our planet, it could impact the sun. And this sounds like, this woodworm sounds like something um, like Planet X or a huge meteor comet that's coming through our solar system and hitting our planets, including Earth, including our moon, including the moons of the other planets, and, and maybe even hitting the sun, because a third of the sun is impacted. So, to me, as a Christian, those theories aren't that wild or outrageous to me. Because it's, it's said here right in the third trumpet of the Bible, of the seventh seal, in Revelation, that this is foretold. So this is a prophecy in the Bible. And it even makes sense scientifically. I mean, we have all the time dangers of being hit by comets and asteroids. We live in a solar system. We live in a galaxy. We live in a universe. You know, you can debate all day long whether God set that up or it happened by the Big Bang Theory or maybe both. Maybe God set in motion the Big Bang Theory. You don't know. I mean, I know by faith that it was created of God, but I'm not, and nobody on this planet is a, can know how God did that. He may have set it up in the way that science explains. And he did that. He created that. He initiated that. It doesn't say in the Bible how he did these things. God created the heavens and earth. It doesn't say God spoke and the heavens and the earth were created. But even if it did, how do we know how God created the earth? How do we know that God didn't put evolution in place? How do we know that God didn't, God's day, instead of being one day, isn't a billion years? God has his own timetable. I some, heard somebody else say that the other day. God has his timetable. and But she was talking about just our lives. Like when we pray for something and we're expecting an answer from God, we might not get that answer for years. Things might take years to work themselves out the way you want them. But other things have to happen before that prayer is answered. See, it's God's timetable. It's not ours. And if that's true in our personal lives, that can be true as far as the entire universe. Think about that one.